Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. Game for Zach Eady, Rob, at Mackey. And it was, you know, look, it was it was in control there late. Uh, my condolences to anybody that had uh, Purdue minus nine and a half. That was a, I'm just going to be honest, that was a loser move from AJ Store. I didn't have Purdue. But I can only imagine how I would feel if I lost because this dude stole a ball from a kid who was trying to run the clock out with the shot clock off and dunked it. That's another discussion. Zach Eady, 25, 14, and three blocks, capping off just an amazing regular season career for Purdue, Rob. Um, I mean, and it's kind of more the same, right, with them. They just keep winning. This train keeps rolling. Yeah, and look, Purdue is Purdue. Um, I, I think the the single takeaway that I have from this game is that Braden Smith rolled his ankle by uh, like stepping backwards after falling out of bounds and rolling it on a uh, on a referee's foot, and he came out of the game for like two minutes and ended up playing thirty eight minutes. So like I'm assuming it's probably not that bad, right? You know, anyone that's played basketball has rolled an ankle before. So like just getting him, making sure that he is back to one hundred percent when you get to the tournament that actually matters. Um, is uh is the biggest priority here but uh, i thought that tonight was the quintessential zach Eady performance 25 points 14 rebounds eight offensive boards seven for 14 from the floor 11 for 14 from the line and oh by the way three assists and three blocks and the thing that that's wild about that is like that's that's kind of just what he averages right like that's just kind of a normal night for zach Eady. and i think that we've all gotten a little bit too accustomed to the idea that there is this seven foot four, 300 pound monster that can move the way that he can move. That has the touch that he has that is putting up these numbers and just kind of say like, yeah, you know, it's normal. It's Zach Eady. It's Purdue. This is what he does, right? 25, 14, three, three on seven, 14 and 11, 14 from the line is an absurd stat line. And especially when that is like, that is a career game for 99.999% of division one basketball players. And that is just like a kind of a normal, like we don't even bat an eye when Zach Eady does that. And he's been doing it basically for two years straight now. And I do believe that like this narrative about, how he gets officiated, how he plays. Does he get called for too many or do, do too many fouls get called against him? Does he not get called for enough of his own fouls? Like it's kind of clouded the fact that we are watching one of the greatest college basketball players that we have ever seen. A guy that came back to school when he had the opportunity to go pro. A guy that has worked himself from uh, backing up and playing basically on, on what was effectively the G League team at IMG six years ago to being the best player in the sport, a, a, a legitimate generational talent. And I just I know we're supposed to do Toast of the Night at the end. I'm doing my Toast of the Night right now to Zach Eady, last game in Mackey yeah. Arena. I am going to miss covering him. I'm going to miss watching him play. Uh, he is one of the most insightful, the friendliest, the greatest dudes that I've ever met. I've told the story before, but the first time that we were at Mackey last year, after the game, he literally walked. There was a line of like kids and 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 dads and like grandpas and families and people just standing there waiting along the front row. And he went for an hour, probably an hour fifteen, and signed every single autograph and took every single selfie. Right when we went this year, there was no line for people to take to take photos and get autographs because he already got all of them. Like everybody already has it. So yeah. I, I just I, I'm gonna miss him when he's gone. I don't think that we appreciate what he's done enough, and I just wanted to make sure that I got that off my chest and had my little soliloquy. So uh, I'm going to step down off of my soapbox. Jarrell, I'm going to yes. pass the mic to you. Go ahead, sir. I think he pretty much covered everything, Rob. And uh, and his you didn't leave his, any love his, for Jarrell to give. It's man. really <laughs> hey, look. It's really it's really it's really good insight. It's really good insight, though, man. I'm spot on with you, man. Like I said, just in the last. The last segment, man, we're looking for – everybody's talking about there aren't any stars. Guys like Zach Eady kind of get underappreciated. Uh, what he what he's done the last two years has been uh, n nothing short of remarkable. So, uh, And like you said, we don't even bat an eye at that anymore. 25, 14, 3 and 3, like it's, it's just another night in the office for him. And uh, and to be honest with you, uh, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how things play out with him going forward, man. Because he's a, he's a hell of a player. He's a game changer, and and crazy enough to even think about this, man. But he's uh 
he's still getting better. He's still getting better, man. I just he, I just watch his patience and everything, man. From even last year to this year, man, he lets the game come to him. He trusts his teammates. Uh, and you know, I mean, he does he doesn't press, he doesn't force, man. And, and no matter what, he's just such a big component of what teams try to do offensively and defensively. He always seems, seems to end up making a huge impact in the game and coming out with double digit, uh, twenty plus points and double digit rebounds and a couple blocks as, as well. Always, so man, uh, major shout out to Zach Eady so for sure. Hey, I want to follow up real quick with you, Jarrell, on this Purdue team because I've I've sort of felt it. We've talked about it, you know, and I know that Purdue is this, they're not strangers to winning the Big Ten and being dominant in the regular season, but they feel like a different iteration this go around. Um, do you agree? And, and if you do, what is it about them specifically that makes them different from past Purdue teams that we've seen? Um. I'm not sure if it's anything specific that's going to make them so different, but I think just watching them all year that they've had that edge. And I, and to be honest, I yep. think this, this for sure is when guys in the locker room at this point, they've been waiting the entire year to get back to this point of the season. Uh, and for the most part, they've rolled throughout and, and they haven't been very inconsistent. You know, they've been just locked in doing their job each and every night, drop a few here. Uh, every blue moon, but for the most part, they've been super consistent. But you, 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 you better be sure, uh, assured that all those guys that were in that locker room, and and have been taking these uh these early exits last year. This is the time of year that they're waiting for. And uh, anything short, I feel like of of, of a Final Four run is going to be a letdown and a disappointment uh, uh, for everybody in Purdue, the entire team, and and the fans as well, too. And I'm sure what they, they all want – they don't want any better way to send ED out than at least get to a Final Four. So anything short of that is going to be a major letdown. Thank you for watching the Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field of 68 content.